there could be nobody else to choose other than Half Man, Half Biscuit. Uh, John has a lot, a lot, a lot of their music. There's lots and lots of stars next to lots and lots of tracks. And I still go to their gigs and we, it's just too obvious. What did God give us, Neil? God gave us life, Nigel. Sure did. A one, two, three, four. John the Baptist knows the score. No chance of getting a job in those days. It was Thatcher's Britain. We were happy enough just doing this sort of thing. It was uh, just me and a chap called Neil, Neil Crossley, who's still in the band now. God gave us life. We had this demo tape at a cheap rate price, about 30 quid, I think it cost. We thought, oh, I'd be a laugh to just, just take it round. And we took it to Factory Records, actually, because uh, we were big fans of all that kind of stuff, you know. And uh, they were okay with it, and, you know, but we knew we wouldn't, you know, obviously nothing would come of that. Uh, and eventually we took it into Jeff, a probe, not, not really thinking anything of it. And as soon as I heard it, I loved it, basically. The first track was God Gave Us Life, which goes on God Gave Us Life, one of the things was to to men so that men in big coats we can take us to the woods to stalk non-existent puppies. God gave us life, so that we could take sweets of strange men in big cars and get driven to the woods to stroke non-existent puppies. I was with my own wife, uh, Ali was driving home from the pro shop and I said to her, did I hear right there? She said, I think so. And he also gave us Earth the Kids. And he also gave us Lionel Brown. The first thing I said was that it's just great. But the recording quality is you know, just pretty poor, really. Yeah. I might have said something stronger than that. Imagine what it uh, uh, so, like. So I said, well, you'll have to re-record it. And this bugger, I said, no, I can't be bothered. More or less those words. <laughs> yeah. right. And uh, I said, well, you know, it's crap and all that. And uh, he said, no, no, it's that's it. I'm finished with that now. It's a sort of typical attitude you have about things, really. Did you send that to John Peel and you did, didn't you? And then yeah, well, I sent John Peel. Well, in those days, of course, it was vinyl, so you got, got a test pressing. So I got a phone call, more or less, the next day. He says, Jeff, he says, what's this? I've just played the first side of this. What, what is it? Tell me, it's just fantastic and all that. I said, well, they called half a lot biscuits. And he said, have they got any new material? So I didn't hesitate. The impression I got was that they hadn't really. So I just said yes. And it just took off like mad. Well, one of the consolations in my life is that however long I may live, uh, Half Man, Half Biscuit will be there as well. There was one in the gang who had scale extra and because of that he thought he was better than you. Every day after school, you go around there to play it, hoping to compete for some kind of championship. But it always took about 50 billion hours to set the track up. And even when you did, the thing never seemed to work. I think it was the star perhaps of us being maybe not viewed solely as a novelty wacky act from Liverpool. Certain people who would have otherwise perhaps dismissed as, you know, they're not the grumble weeds, you know. Um, not there's anything wrong with the grumble weeds, of course, but you know, uh, there's a bit more to us. You know, and I think John realised that perhaps from the start. Yeah. You know. And now he's working in a job with a future. He hands me my gyro every two weeks. I feel sorry for younger bands now, in a way. That, um, it's that I think it must be quite difficult to get. Uh, you know, it's an understatement. Sort of quite yeah. difficult. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's virgin on the impossible. Yeah. Whereas, at least when we, we when we were young, you could you could have that possibility. Even as we were saying before, of having such an amateur. Sounding, I suppose, uh, could have been worse, couldn't it? But an amateur sounding, looking, uh, appearing outfit like ourselves being played on national radio. Um, you know, it, it was both fascinating and thrilling at the same time, uh, and possible. We, we were kind of, uh, not pleasantly surprised, more pleasantly shocked to hear ourselves on the radio, you know, it was getting our heads around that. It got us to think, do we now, you know, think about what we're doing and do we kind of start doing different types of songs but because of the things John would say after each song he played we thought 
No, because he's enjoying that, what we're doing at the moment. So why change it? Let's just, you know, sort of carry on doing the same thing. Nigel, tell us more. Give us the title of the LP again first before we go any further. Um, the LP will be called Voyage to the Bottom of the Road. That's right. And uh, it's released when? Um, sometime November. Exciting plans to, to, to uh, promote the record? No. Right. No. Okay. <laughs> I, knew the answer, I knew the answer to that before I even asked it. I think his written word is criminally underrated. And his way with words. Uh, just to listen to his show, the things he's talking about and the, the things he's saying between songs, you know, uh, fantastic, very humorous. So much so, actually, I stole one of his lines from one of my songs. It was a magical place. I half expected a nymph to appear. Shyly, from out of the break. He was reviewing a programme about an advice programme or something. For, for, I don't know what it was, even advice was on, but... And then he just wrote the line, almost inevitably Claire Rayner appears. And I thought, I'll have that, you uh, know. That's where, that's that's where yeah, from, yeah, yeah, so yeah. I stole that, yeah. 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 <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> but, you know. But then almost inevitably, Claire Rayner appeared. Even now, writing stuff, playing stuff, you think, you think to yourself, um, you know, um, would this still have been uh, acceptable on John's show? And as long as we think it is, or it would have been, you know, we'll go with it. You know. for 23 years. I've said it before, a national treasure, there's no question about it. When I die, I want them to be buried with me. Yeah.